Dear audience, today we have Catherine Molly with us from Aegean University, Greece, expert MSc Geography, who speaks to us today to our audience about climate change and how serious it is as a threat for the world and at the same time the typology of natural disasters, man-made and natural disasters. She elaborates and comments her perception and also the regional specific her country specific experience you also shares and which is a wonderful learning for us so i would request our audience to just peep into so thanks a lot uh, joining us catherine from greece and uh, once again you know a very warm welcome platform of riso and giving your time such a wonderful possibility for us to explore from you what you understand on the disaster management global climate change So I would just ask you a couple of questions. Please respond to us so that you know our audience can also draw benefits from uh, your perception, your understanding, and your interpretation. So my first question to you: What is your understanding and personal interpretation on global climate change and how serious it is? My, from my point of view, of course, because it affects human, it affects animals. It affects plants. Whatever is on the earth, and whatever change we have on the earth, it affects all of us. It affects our health. It affects wherever we live. It affects the food we eat. It affects the water we drink, of course. But uh, if you want to specify the question more about. What climate change? You mean the um, the the climate change about the raining, or the climate change about the warmth of the earth? Whatever. Mm-hmm. What do you want specifically? When I say climate change, uh, and when I use the global climate change, I mean the global warming or the changes which are happening that are happening. in its physical dimension here on this planet earth let's say the temperature change or the change in the water amount rainfall and you know there are different possibilities you can better understand and throw light so that's what i mean the climate change that we can see about now is that the degrees are higher very higher the <clears throat> the temperature is higher we uh, we don't have enough water as we had from raining the animals are affected from that of course uh we are affected of course um some uh, uh, uh global uh, disasters of course are happening from the global warming um not so much rain means not so much rain for the earth so it affects the plants the atmosphere is not good for us as example um i think it's two days ago from uh, the sahara i think mm-hmm. the wind came to athens okay. and not only athens and uh, the sky was red okay. and everywhere was dust okay. it was like sahara mm-hmm. you came out and you saw just a red sky okay. Okay. which is of course not normal mm-hmm. Yeah. So the atmosphere yes. and the air that we breathe mm-hmm. will affect us soon. Oh, okay. of course. Thanks a lot. Second question is uh there are many people who are impacted differently by the global climate change. So what do you understand and uh, can you please brief us up on uh, eco distress, eco anxiety the people are sure of struggling at this present time present generation because of climate change it is depleting and 
the condition and the quality of our climate is certainly falling down dramatically and drastically. People are having a lot of psychological disbalance, such as like uh, now we say global, uh, we say uh, climate anxiety and uh, distress, eco, -dis eco distress and climate distress. So can you throw light on that since like you have a geographical background? I mean, how it is and how important it is for us to understand global climate change from a psychological perspective also. I mean, as a geographer, we had lessons about how the planet changes, not psychology. Okay, there's no issues. The only psychological, the only psychological thing is about what people think about the disasters or what people think about the different um, if, uh, disasters that happen in Greece or on Earth, of course, but not specifically about our understanding of the disasters or our anxiety about the disasters. In my point of view, of course, whatever happens on Earth, especially for us that we are much younger, affects us. I don't know if if you can understand what I mean. If the atmosphere is not good for us, if you don't have enough uh, sun, or if you don't have enough uh, uh, quality air to breathe, you eventually come up ill. Mm -hmm. So that thing stresses you up. You think that uh, it will affect you, you cannot work, or uh, you will be anxious for your children, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's my point of view, of course. Mm. That's really good. Not in a, in, a, <clears throat> in a more scientific work. It's what I see. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's great. Um, next question to you. It's like, uh, now we understand, we've also discussed on climate change, how serious it is, and eco-distress, eco-anxiety, and they are wonderful comments from your side. But what's your personal understanding, since your background also supports this issue a lot, economically, from a research point of view, how the world, we as global society, can handle and can tackle the threat of global climate change. What could be done and what should be our future implementation uh, uh, strategies so that we can apply them and uh, reach a balance between us and the climate? Or, uh, I haven't done a research about that on uh, uh, universities. So again, uh, I will tell you that um, the climate change, as I said, affects all of us. So, if we don't do anything about it, it will destroy us. We will not live anymore. So, uh, the first thing that, of course, has happened, or, or it's happening now, is about doing the planet green, like using electric cars, electric uh, aeroplanes or electric trains or whatever it will be in the future. That, of course, means that we don't have so much carbon dioxide on the atmosphere. So it, I think it will reduce the, the uh, what do you call it, um, the whole, the environmental whole, what, um, what's called, from my thinking, of course. But I have done a, a literature research for me, and many people have said that the global warming is not happening. I disagree, completely disagree, because everything that's happening, it's not normal. Mm -hmm. The temperature is higher, and it's not higher like we say, okay, it's 20 degrees 
and now it's 22 degrees. Or we have uh, two inches of rain, now we have two inches and a half rain. Everything is much, much, much more higher or much, much, much more different. We can't say that it's not happening. Something is happening. Now, if we call it climate change or whatever, that's okay. But everything, something is happening and something is affect, affecting everyone. That's right. My next question to you is, uh, uh, what is a typology of uh, understanding natural disasters? And what is the difference between natural disasters and man-made disasters? Can you please brief us a little bit on it? Okay. Is a volcano a natural disaster? Is um, a tsunami a natural disaster? Is um, An earthquake, a natural disaster, it's a climate change, as we said. Mm -hmm. So a man-made disaster, man-made disaster is the ozone hole, mm -hmm. with all the ca uh, carbon dioxide. Um, whatever people do to the earth, like fires, um like destroying the uh, the trees or a plane crash for example it's not a natural disaster mm -hmm. it's a man's job mm, yes. human's job mm, true. we true. cannot prevent it as a certain stage mm -hmm. but we we don't we try not to provoke it. We cannot uh, stop an earthquake from happening. It's something that will happen. Eventually, it will happen. Mm -hmm. If if you if you can understand my point of view, what I'm saying. Yeah, right. You're absolutely right. We can stop cutting trees. Mm -hmm. We can stop using cars for everything, especially in Greece. You mm -hmm. want to go to the supermarket, you will take your car. You want to go to the stadium, which is, I don't know, one kilometer away, you take your car. You want to go your uh, you want to go to a cafe, you take your car. Mm -hmm. You can ride your bike instead. Or you can of course go by foot. Sure. These things I think will affect the climate change so it will slowly the process. Not very much, of course, because the damage is done. But I think it won't be so, so dramatic if everyone cares about the environment and if everyone understands that it's happening. I would like to ask another question since uh, like it's a major concern in your country. Fire, how to manage fires? and how to stop them, sort of, you know, mitigate the impact of fires. Would you like to comment on, on that since it's a man-made disaster, please? Fires, from our research and from our lessons and from my point of view, are destroying the planet, of course, are destroying the nature. It affects the humans, it affects the animals. It's very difficult in Greece to provoke to um, to stop fires 
because people in Greece think that if you uh, start a fire on the forest, then you can build your own house. What I mean. I want to build a house in a very nice forest near a beautiful lake, which is forbidden. If I start a fire and the area is destroyed, I can do many, 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 many paperwork to ask for a permission to build my house there. I think that uh, in America or in England or in Europe generally, that doesn't happen, of course. But here, the, the people think that they can, um, they can make advantage of everything. Mm -hmm. Everything, every disaster, I mean which is eventually bad for them, of course. Other things that uh, make the fires in Greek is that we don't protect the forests, we don't cut down older trees, we don't make pathways, so if anything happens, we can... Uh, we can... Uh, uh, we can make the the path for the firefighter much easier, so he can deal with the fire much easier. We think that um, um, our rubbish must not be in the beams; can be everywhere. We think that we can go on the beach and light fire just for fun, just to have uh, a company and uh, have drinks and have fun and okay, it's nothing. It's not nothing. Mm -hmm. Fires in Greece are every day. And when I say every day on July and June and August, it can be 50 fires in Greece in one day in different areas, of course. Sometimes we don't, people don't do it, of course, to make harm, but they are not careful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, of course, it's to make harm or to make advantage, as I said, an example, to buy a property or to build a house or you don't like the forest behind your house. Mm -hmm. You think it's nothing. True. I think it's this. It's very. Uh, it's a very similar situation in Australia. You, uh, they have a lot of fires. I think. Mm -hmm. Two. I don't know if it's for the same reasons, of course, but fires happen and if people are not careful, it can have a fire in your own house, if you're not careful. Okay. Animals are dying, we don't protect them, they are burned, mm -hmm. we can't do anything to protect them. So, everything on the planet changes. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere changes. You breathe all the carbon dioxide from the fire. Since you've given us a wonderful uh, insight on fires and how to manage them, and what is the context and intensity in your country, which is like fire we know most of the times is man-made natural disaster, now I come to a natural disaster which is not man-made but most times though of course the reason at the back of it man-made is always there. Tea tsunami what's your understanding and how it is 
uh, I mean the intensity of it it causes damage to human society and how to handle it how to sort of manage with this kind of threat which is happening due to climate change also specifically talking tea tsunami so could you please brief us up on this one noise everything mm -hmm. people die animals die uh, plants die properties are destroyed um, it destroys everything it affects the water that people drink uh, it affects uh, whatever it touches if if I can say that uh, th that phrase people lose all their uh, properties like houses, cars, uh, their own work. Mm -hmm. Cities are destroyed. In Greece, of course, we don't have, but I think that a tsunami is a natural disaster that, again, we can't protect people from it. Not in a very, very, very uh, wide range. I mean, okay, you can um, protect them by warning them that it will happen. But you should, of course, um, try to uh, communicate to them that if a tsunami happens, how can you protect your property? How can you protect your own self? How can you escape from the area that it's going to hit? But you cannot make it disappear, if you know what I say, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's like an earthquake. It's like a volcano eruption. It's something that it will eventually happen. The thing is that we should warn people, let them know how they can protect themselves, and try with the climate change that's happening now to eliminate whatever it will affect the climate change and then the climate change will eventually make more tsunamis, more earthquakes, more fires and everything that comes. Thanks a lot, Catherine, giving your precious time and throwing your insights and sharing them before us. And uh, certainly, I mean, it's very important for us to understand how the impact of natural disasters and man-made disasters and global climate change has been happening and causing damage and also a very strong threat to present human society. And uh, your geographical expertise have helped us a lot. I'm sure that our audience would certainly like your perceptions, the way you've shared with us. That's really outstanding for us to have you, a VSO platform. Highly appreciate your presence here on this uh, plan on board with us. Thanks a lot giving your precious time.